So the next speaker is uh, Hadar Elor. She'll be talking about neural 3D reconstruction in the wild. And okay, hi everyone. So this work is, was done as part of my postdoc in uh, Cornell University. Jamming was an intern at our team and he, he actually did most of the work. And so it's titled Neural 3D Reconstruction in the Wild, and uh, we presented it earlier in SIGGRAPH this year. So reconstructing a 3D mesh from a collection of 2D images is a long-standing goal in computer vision and graphics, and still today, creating high-quality meshes for real-world scenes typically requires either a large amount of manual work that is carried out by professional 3D artists, or carefully scanning the scene with expensive 3D sensors that are not widely available among people, for example, that uh, visit these landmarks. In this work, we introduce a new method that can generate high quality uh, meshes simply from an unconstrained um, internet photo collection using a neural field-based technique. And here's a result that uh, we were able to generate uh, with our method. Uh, from internet photos of uh, Trevay Fountain, and as you can see, uh, it allows for extracting a mesh that contains detailed fine-grained structures, such as the statues that can be found at Trevay Fountain. And here's another example, this time of uh, the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, reconstructed from several hundred images that uh, can be found on Flickr. Okay, so our work is inspired by uh, recent advances in neural rendering, especially Nerf in the Wild, that achieves uh, high quality renderings of landmarks from internet photo collections. But that work um, focuses mainly on view synthesis and their underlying geometry is a density field that is often uh, fuzzy and, and fog-like and incompatible with current graphic pipelines. More recent methods have shown that it is possible to unify a volume uh, rendering approach with surface-based representations, and this enables generation of high-quality surface geometry for multi-view images that surpass uh, the quality of traditional reconstruction pipelines. But uh, the problem is that these methods are often demonstrated in controlled capture settings, and there are several key challenges in scaling them to real-world scenes captured by internet photo collections. So first of all, the methods typically require uh, input images with constant illumination, uh, but the images that are found on the internet, uh, of course, have varying illumination. They're captured by a crowd of, photograp of photographers that are um, visiting these landmarks during different hours of the day and under different weather conditions. And they also contain dynamic objects, such as, as people, um, that do not consistently appear throughout the collection. And secondly, while these methods work well for objects, they're not practical for large-scale scenes. And so to get a sense uh, of the huge compute demands uh, required for large-scale internet collections that contain hundreds or even thousands of images, an integrated framework that's based on NUSE, which is one of these methods that combines uh, neural rendering with surface-based representations, it converges after roughly uh, 10 days when trained on 32 GPUs. And Hopefully you agree that that's intractable, especially in academic settings uh, with limited access to high-end GPUs. And so before diving into our method and addressing how uh, we tackle these challenges, let's take a closer look at how NUSE works, uh, which we base our method upon. So the input to NUSE is a set of images with known camera poses, and NUSE shoots camera rays into a unit, sphere bound, a unit bounding sphere that contain the object and samples a bunch of points on the ray inside the unit sphere hierarchically using volume rendering uh, to produce an image. And once this image is compared uh, to the known input image, this gives a signal for optimizing the parameters of a neural sign distance field. Now, since NUSA's course samples are spread across the sphere, we call NUSA's sampling strategy sphere-based sampling. And it works well for small objects, but can be inefficient for large-scale scenes because a lot of samples um, in empty space are pretty much wasted. And so how can we remove unnecessarily core samples to speed up training? Now, because we use structure for motion uh, to estimate camera poses for the input images, we can also use its sparse point cloud as a rough surface estimate. 
And so at the start of training, we generate a sparse volume that encloses the sparse SFM point cloud. And the sampling range of a given ray can then be reduced to the intersection between the ray and the sparse voxel. And we call this sampling technique voxel-guided sampling. And to further improve sampling efficiency at fine levels, we propose a surface-guided sampling strategy that further increases sampling density around the true surface. And so to achieve this, we periodically cache the SDF predictions from previous iterations inside SFM sparse volume using an OCK tree. And we query the surface position from this cache at each training iteration. Our method uses a hybrid of voxel and surface guided sampling technique. First, we leverage the sparse point clouds from structure for motion, and then we generate surface guided samples, which are based on the current state of optimization. Next, to handle uh, the varying illuminations on different images, similar to Nerf in the Wild, we learn an appearance embedding for each image, and we feed it to the color MLP. Now, the model proposed in Nerf in the Wild also uses a transient Nerf to model dynamic objects in the scene. But we empirically found that adding a transient head results in many scene structures that are modeled as view-dependent transient effect rather than the geometry MLP whose convergence is slower. And what you can see in this visualization is that almost uh, the entire um, scene is modeled as uh, part of the transient Nerf, which is, of course, undesirable. And so, to eliminate a race between the two heads, we instead use estimated segmentation maps to remove rays belonging to dynamic objects during training, such as the car depicted in the image in uh, the bottom right. And we found that this simple strategy works well and allows for focusing on the static parts of the scene. Okay, so how can we evaluate our method? Um, so of course, we need ground truth 3D geometry, but since there is no existing data set that pairs internet photo collections with ground truth 3D, we construct a new benchmark data set for in the wild scenes that contains four landmarks. We obtained 3D LiDAR data from Open Heritage 3D. Um, they provide uh, freely licensed 3D scans of cultural heritage sites. Uh, the first problem is that we need to align them um, to um, SFM uh, coordinate frame, so we align uh, our data sets using an ICP optimization method, and we then crop, crop them to keep only regions that are visible from the internet photo collections, as only these visible regions should be used for evaluation. And our final alignment achieves a reprojection error of less than one pixel across all scenes. So you can see here um, the, the alignment quality uh, what you're seeing is, is a rendering of the LiDAR scanned point clouds as depth maps uh, by projecting the points to a set of camera views in the aligned SFM coordinate frame. Okay, so moving on to uh, some results. I'll first start with some qualitative results showing comparisons with several baselines. So what you're seeing now um, is a comparison with Colmap, which is a state-of-the-art classic uh, multi-view stereo algorithm, which is followed by Poisson's surface reconstruction to obtain a mesh representation. And as you can see, our method produces cleaner reconstructions and is also nearly times three times faster. And here's another comparison to Colmap on the Lincoln Memorial, uh, where our method can also produce cleaner and more complete results. We also compare uh, our method with a state-of-the-art learning-based uh, multi-view stereo algorithm called uh, VizMVS. Uh, to reconstruct meshes, we fuse the depth maps that are produced by VizMVS and perform Poisson surface reconstruction on the dense point cloud. And you can see uh, here even more clearly that our results are more complete and uh, less noisy, as shown here on the Brandenburg Gate and here on the Lincoln Memorial. We also show that the geometry cannot be recovered directly using the density field estimated in um, Nerf in the Wild because the depth maps that uh, are estimated from it are inconsistent among different views. So what you're seeing here are, are qualitative results obtained uh, using Nerf in the Wild on both Brandenburg Gate and the Lincoln Memorial. And you can see these are extremely low quality even though this method can render high quality novel views. We also perform a quantitative uh, evaluation to these baselines. So we consider multiple configurations, such as the uh, different octree uh, depths 
for coal map in the Poisson reconstruction because we found uh, that this uh, made a difference. And our evaluation shows that our method achieves best reconstruction quality and is also reasonably efficient. And we also uh, conduct some ablation studies to validate the, effecti the effectiveness of uh, the proposed sampling technique on the Lincoln Memorial. And we saw that hybrid sampling consistently achieved the best reconstruction score across almost all timestamps and also remains noticeably better than the baseline, even after substantial training time. And you can see uh, the visualization here that pure voxel guided sampling takes much longer uh, to obtain performance comparable to the hybrid uh, sampling approach and the sphere based uh, sampling is pretty much incapable of achieving it in in reasonable time okay thank you all for listening and you're welcome to check out our project page for more details thank you Adar, for the talk questions So let me start with one. You show a lot of beautiful uh, renderings. Have you measured the actual accuracy in centimeters in 3D space? Yes, so the way that the, the accuracy that we measure is actually in, in centimeters, we're comparing either to the LIDAR scanned, how much the, the precision, how much our points are close to point. In the end, we're sampling points on meshes, right? So the scores are over very dense point clouds. So we're, we're seeing the uh, metrics on how close we are to the ground truth and how much we, we cover the ground truth well. And it's in the order of centimeters, tens of centimeters? Right, but you have to have some uh, scale for each scene, so it's not completely automatic. Uh, and I don't remember the numbers exactly, but it's in the supplementary material somewhere. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Well, okay. Thank you very much, Adam.